I'm Tomasz Eriavec. I work at the Jozef Stefan Institute in Ljubljana, Slovenia. I'm also partially employed by the Academy of Sciences here in Ljubljana. And I've been working at the Institute since I finished my studies, which were on computer science. I did a master's degree in cognitive science at the University of Edinburgh and then uh, did my PhD again here in Ljubljana. At the beginning, uh, and that was also the topic of my PhD, uh, I dealt with morphology of Slovenian, and then afterwards kind of uh, moved on to compiling, gathering resources for Slovenian. And I've been, well, I'm mostly still doing that now uh, as the national coordinator of the Slovenian Club. I've been doing that for the last, I would say, 15 years. This was the result of a first a joint project with the Academy of Sciences, uh, which then continued in a series of projects where we did quite complex digital editions of, well, very important works for Slovenian, like the Freising Monuments, which is a 1,000 year old uh, uh, manuscript, the oldest surviving manuscript of Slovenian. So in this light, uh, I think the work was quite important because for the first time, people from the humanities, especially from the academy, uh, got into contact with the whole issue of how to model a text, uh, a complex text, uh, as a digital edition. So moving away from just putting a PDF online, but rather having a carefully structured TI encoded document as your base resource, and from that making um, a digital library, which then people can uh, can actually read and browse. Uh, so I think through in through that perspective, I think the work was quite important, mostly uh, so that the people from the humanities could see that there are other ways of putting uh, books, uh, manuscripts, and and these kind of editions online. In the wider perspective, I have to say that the kind of works we produced are kind of for an exclusive audience, for the people that are really interested in the details of a work, rather for, for, than for the white public that just wants to read a work. So uh, here, maybe we are still a kind of specialist uh, uh, application rather than a general one, but still, I think I would say the most important uh, long-term effect of this is, uh, uh, well, getting the people from the humanities to, to appreciate uh, what kind of things they have to do to put out a, a proper uh, digital edition. Working on this parliament project was very enjoyable uh, because the team was really nice and they, well, uh, they took on board the comments I had and they weren't very upset about them because there were a lot of comments because we really tried to make all the 17 corpora interoperable so that you can use the same set of programs over any of the corpus and get the same result, for instance, to mount them on the concordancers. Uh, so yeah, I was really happy with the project. Now for its uh, future use, I think the most interesting part of this is actually the fact that we took parliamentary corpora as our, uh, well, the data that we processed, because these are not only interesting for linguists, like lots of corpora are, but they should also be interesting for political scientists, for social scientists, for historians, uh, not the least. So uh, potentially they have a very, very wide uh, field of potential, let's call them users or consumers. And uh, well, I hope uh, that they will in fact start using the corpus, uh, especially because we hope to have a continuation of the project where we will have even more corpora and update the corpora as well. What I would really like to see to happen uh, with Parliament, uh, given that we have not the complete corpus, but definitely all the schemas, sample, samples of the corpora, all the software we use, that's all on GitHub. So what I would really like to see is for this to become a kind of bottom-up project that people would start adding their own corpora uh, without some oversight uh, and the corpora that already exist, that they would be regularly updated so that they would uh, remain current. Um, and then 
if this would actually be a kind of bottom-up project, then it would, as, as it were, run itself, right? And we would have more and more corpora, larger and larger corpora. Also, uh, not just going forward, but also back in time, so that they also become a, a, let's call it a diachronic resource. Uh, and I think that would be kind of the most that I could hope for. I'm actually quite proud of the Slovenian Claren Consortium because it uh, consists of 12 partners, so 12 institutions, which is quite a lot for a small country such as Slovenia. So we actually managed to gather in the consortium all the major institutions that either produce language resources or, well, uh, take them as, as the basis for their research. So we have all the Slovenia uh, universities, we have uh, research institutes, all the main ones, and also some societies and also some companies, which is also nice. And the other thing uh, is that uh, our repository, I mean, there's lots of repositories in, in the scope of Clarin, which are larger in terms of how many resources they have, uh, but we do try really hard to put uh, into our query repository only high quality language resources which among other things means that we sometimes uh, spend up to a week or even two weeks uh, polishing the metadata as well as the data that people submit. So we give them a lot of help uh, in order so that the final resource is as high quality as possible. I would say Clarin is, well, at least in my limited experience with other research infrastructure, it's very well organized. It has this very nice technical infrastructure, which quite a few of the other ones lack. Uh, so I think these are kind of the, the major uh, advantages of Clarin, which it should build on. Uh, and here, I think the most important thing would be actually to reach out as much as possible to the humanities and social scientists scholars so that they actually know about Clarin. I've noticed this is definitely a problem in Slovenia that people in fact don't know that it exists. And to actually uh, also train the, the linguists, the humanities scholars to be actually able to use the tools that we offer even now and hopefully even more tools that we will offer in the future.